Hi guys and welcome to another episode of I Like Trains. Today we are here with another Hornby unboxing. It is a double O gauge model of BR Terrier Carisbrook number 13 herself. I have to admit this one really holds a special place in my heart in terms of one side of my family actually originates from the Isle of Wight and of course we all know where Carisbrook comes from named after the castle so this one really is quite a special unboxing for me um, so obviously we'll unbox her we'll go in for a closer look in terms of obviously the finer details of the model obviously we'll get it down on the track and see how she runs but of course please remember to like subscribe and comment down below if you do know one of the hobbit terriers and what you actually think of them in terms of running performers but other than that let's get into the video So yeah, there is Carisbrook for you. Um, so like I say, BR Terrier Carisbrook number 13, um, double O gauge model railways. I've always liked the, the original Hornby packaging. I think it's quite nice and classy, obviously with the very tint of yellow there at the top, the white in the middle there, obviously highlighted the locomotive. Um, and she does it stunning on the box there, doesn't she? So what I think I'll do is obviously I'll show you the, the side of it. So obviously we have R3848 BR Terrier Carisbrook number 13. So that is what she is in terms of numbers of the line. So we'll obviously get the sleeve out here. Off here. We'll have a look. Take the sleeve off. Oh, I am really excited for this one. I'm really excited for this one. So I'm not going to lie, I've had this one for quite a little while now. Um, she has sat there, dusty on a shelf, um, and I've really been waiting in terms of obviously waiting until I can actually do the video to unbox her. So we are finally here. Um, so there she is in the packaging. I've always liked the Hornby packaging, I've said that before. Um, we've got the usual guff here by the, end, by the looks of it, in terms of actually running her camera slightly moved there for some reason sorry about that so move that out of the way there is the 8181x class terrier 060 steam locomotive dcc ready she's dcc ready so that's actually quite nice um to be fair nothing really more i need to show you in terms of that we all know what that means by now in terms of the hornby locomotives um, but yeah, really excited about her. So obviously let's just get her out. Obviously we're going for a closer look. We'll take the outer sleeve off again. Shut that down. Um, we do have a tiny little pack here. In terms of obviously little extra couplings and everything you get with her. So you can obviously attach that on if you want to. We'll put that to one side. Let's just get her out and obviously take a look. Wow. Wow. The weight on her as well. I have to say, the weight is very, very heavy. She looks really nice, doesn't she? In terms of the paintwork, like I said, I can't get over the weight. The weight is actually incredibly heavy for this locomotive, which is not surprising um, from what I understand the running plate here um, is actually most of the weight of the locomotive. So that would probably make quite a lot of sense. Um, but what I think I need to do is put her down and obviously we'll go for a quick history in terms of Carisbrook and then we can take a closer look at the model. So there is Carisbrook up close and personal for you all. So she was built in 1880 and originally called Wernersh. She was numbered 77 and she was the 44th Terrier ever to be created. And she was spent her working life on the Guildford and Horsham line. In 1911, this Terrier actually became the first one to be converted to the A1X and later worked on the Tunbridge Wells, East Grinstead and Haywards Heath line. She was a consistently hard working engine 
but in 1925 she was taken out of the service and due to be scrapped. It was only when in 1926 Southern Railway instead decided to send her to the Isle of Wight where she replaced W9 and she arrived in May 1927. When the Isle of Wight Railway relinquished the Terriers back to the mainland, number 13 Carrisbrook continued as one of the three left and operated to the Merseystone and Ventnor West services and then by 1942 she was the last Terrier left doing Newport piloting duties and in 1952 she was sent to Hailing Island off the island itself and that's pretty much where she ended up um, and then in, it was decided then in 1960 that she would be scrapped and unfortunately she doesn't exist anymore but she in her lifetime racked up over 1,230,000 miles I mean, that's pretty incredible for a locomotive. I. It's a shame we we'll never see her in real life, but I'm glad Hornby have decided to recreate her because I really do feel that she needs to live on. She really does need to live on. Um, but unfortunately, there's literally only two Terriers, as far as I'm aware, on the island still running now. So it's Fentner and Newport, and they are the only two Terriers left on the island. And bear in mind, I think, as far as I'm aware, there were about nine originally. And now, there's only two. It's quite sad, but unfortunately, these things happen. And I'm glad at least Fentner and Newport were around to be saved. But other than that, we can at least enjoy her in model form. So, I think what we need to do now is obviously go in for a closer look and have a look at the detail of this model. So in terms of the model, I think the first thing that actually really strikes me with this is that the wheels are really nicely painted and really nicely designed. I think it's really, really nice there. And obviously the copper chimney. I think the copper chimney and as far as I'm aware, that does feel copper, it doesn't feel plastic. So that's always a really nice touch. I think the side tank as well is finely painted and the font is done really nicely. For the British Railways logo and obviously the nameplate Carisbrook there. I think the pipe work in terms of the safety valve and everything is separately fitted so I think that's actually a really nice feature in terms of the front of the cab and then actually in the cab as well there is actually finely detailed um, and there seems to be separately fitted pieces inside there as well so I'll show you up close and personal now. So yeah, like I said, you can see obviously the separately fitted pieces inside the cab there. Seems to be really finely detailed to be fair as well, and I think it's really done to a nice finish. Obviously you've got the, almost like the gold sort of finish there. Um, but yeah, I think it looks really quite nice inside the cab. And then yeah, of course, obviously the back of the locomotive. So you've actually got the coal bunkers here, which I have to say, the coal's actually been done to quite a nice standard. It's got quite a nice sheen finish on, over it, which actually makes it look quite realistic. Obviously, the buffers, I think, have been done to quite a nice standard back here. Unfortunately, they're not spring buffers, but I'm not expecting that in terms of this loco. And then, of course, obviously, you've got the actual back of the cab, the windows, and they've got their own shutters there, which actually does make a really nice effect in terms of the locomotive. Overall... I think it's quite nice. Um, let's spin it around. Overall, I think it's generally a really nice locomotive. And like I say, I, I, I really applaud Hornby for this. I think they're, in terms of their Terrier moulds, I think they've knocked it out of the park. I think, you know, I've seen the Dapol ones and I've seen the Backman ones, but I generally think Hornby actually have knocked it out of the park in terms of their terrain moulds. I think, like I say, just in terms of the finer detail, obviously the hand rails, like I said, the safety valve, all the finely, detailed, finely fitted pieces here in terms of the cab and everything. And like I say, the running plate weighs quite a lot as well. Um, yes, fair enough, it's not spring buffers. It would be nice if we could get that at some point on a 
Warm Beer Terrier later down the line. But even just the actual front of the face itself, the cab, the smoke box, you know, you've got the smoke box dart there. I think, you know, that's separately fitted again as well. They didn't need to go to that trouble to do this for the Terriers, but they have. So I think they've actually shown quite a lot of love in terms of the Terriers here. But yeah, I just, I actually generally, I, maybe I'm being a little bit biased in terms of the Terriers, but and maybe specifically this one. If it wasn't for the fact that this one didn't hold a close spot to my heart, maybe I wouldn't really, I'd maybe be a little bit more harsh towards it. But I can't help but love her. Like Karis Brook, I love her. I just think we need to get her down the track, obviously she, see how she performs. And just very quickly before we go down to the track, I just thought I'd show you this, an actual picture that I have of the real life Karis Brook. In her livery there, the British Railways Karis Brook number 13. So I would assume realistically based on the timeline, this will probably be somewhere between maybe the 30s and the 60s. This would have been taken on the Isle of Wight. Um, but yeah, unfortunately it's black and white, so we can't really see compared the livery. But I just think I love Terry as what a stunning little locomotive she really is. So there is Karis Brook down on the tracks for you guys. So what I think we need to do is just apply a little bit of power just to see how she'll perform in terms of a crawl. Bear in mind she is coupled up to a good train. And she's not moving. Maybe it's because she's over points. And it's because she is over points. She needs to move pretty well. Wow. She's like a little pocket rocket, I have to say. We know she is quite powerful in terms of speed, but how does she perform in the crawl? That's really what we want to know. So, Turn up a little bit. Do you know what? That really wasn't that bad, to be fair. I think it turns the crawl wise. That really wasn't bad. Let's see if she can perform a slow crawl over the points. Just about. So I actually think once she's running properly, I actually think she could perform a pretty decent crawl. Um, the motor and the mechanism from Hornby seems to be quite decent in terms of this model.
So yeah, there has been our review of Hornby's Terrier British Railways Harris Brook number 13. I really hope you've enjoyed this review. I really know I have, just purely for the fact I love having a Terrier in the collection. They're one of my favourite terms of models and just actual classes of steam locomotives in general. I generally love them and I love the southern livery itself and for the fact it comes from the Isle of Wight is pretty much a bonus for me like I said in terms of my family heritage so I really hope you've enjoyed this if you have please consider giving it a like comment down below if you do own this what you think of it and please consider subscribing because there will be plenty more train reviews to come up in the future I've got some really really good ones you guys are what I want to see but other than that I really hope you have a good evening I really hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon